to Season 1, Episode 13 of the Grave Consequences Podcast. I am Caleb B, and that's where you can follow me on Twitter. Please follow the show on Twitter, at GC underscore cat. Follow at Social Suplex as well, and make sure you subscribe to the Social Suplex Podcast Network, Wherever you download your podcast, if you want more of my lovely tones, you can listen to me every week, every Wednesday night on Eddie and Caleb's Hero Cast. Follow that at EC underscore hero. Uh, today, we are here to review season one, episode 13 of Lucha Underground, entitled Mundo versus the Machine. Um, so before we get into that, how are you doing on this lovely uh, November 12th evening, Greg? horrible uh work was hell and uh i don't feel like doing anything right now yeah and you didn't even get your ps5 either yeah i heard people were getting that i didn't know it was coming out already i uh, i don't mm-hmm. is there even any games out for it like new games not remakes but new games spider-man miles morales that's gonna be a, i think that's the only launch title oh, okay he's a good spider-man yeah. Yeah, uh, it's going to be a continuation of the previous Spider-Man game from the PS4. Okay, so it's it's not completely new game. It's using the same engine, almost kind of like DLC, sounds like. That's that's what it sounds like, yeah. Um, I haven't seen price points for it yet, official price points, but I had heard it was going to drop as like a $40 uh, price point, and I'm like, oh, that sounds like half a game. <laughs> it probably Which... is pretty short. Yeah, uh, seems seems like similar to like that. Uh, is like Uncharted Four: The Lost Legacy or whatever, which that was just DLC. Yeah, I I almost never get a console the first year it's out, just because there's never any games. It takes like a year. Yeah, exactly, exactly, and that's why I'm waiting. Uh, but I will be getting my Xbox One X or Series X or whatever the hell it's called. And I will be uh, blowing fat uh, smoke rings into it for sure. Yeah, uh, apparently people were doing that and they're like, oh my God, look at the Xbox, it's smoking. It's ridiculous. Oh, is that what that was? Because I saw people making things. Yeah, that that was fake news, buddy. I didn't even know what they meant by it. Uh, But now 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 it makes more sense. I was just like, what? The Xbox is smoking? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it just turned 21 can smoke now um oh let's get right into it man uh first things first uh they, they name dropped the band and by god i forgot to write the name of the band oh it was mariachi l bronx was the name of the house band this week That's and cool. uh you know they were just you know a nice little nice little tune there from them N- nothing that i can remember off the top of my head but it's a it's a good way to start a show it's a you un- it's a way to establish we are different we are alternative a true alternative kind of like uh it had like an mtv unplugged kind of feel for a wrestling Mm -hmm. show yep and what's funny is uh like two days before this episode dropped the lead singer in that band killed himself but um whoa really (laughs) no i'm joking oh god dude i'm Uh, my brain is fried you can tell me anything and i'll be on a uh reference brother oh well, Courtney Love did that, but moving on. Of course, yeah. Hashtag Kurt Cobain didn't kill himself. Uh, <laughs> okay, first things first, we get a promo from the uh, lunatic of the open road, Son of Havoc, and his girlfriend, the baddest bitch in this building, Evil Lise. Basically, she says that she doesn't date losers, and hey, you know, whoever wants to step to Son of Havoc, come on out. And boy, oh boy, the guy to come out and challenge uh, Son of Havoc <clears throat> was Angelico, and I was excited because I know how this story goes, and it's so fun to see it start. Yeah, it was a very good match. I mean, uh, Son yeah. of Havoc and Angelico, they had some. They started off with some really good, like English style uh, chain wrestling, British style. Yeah, uh, they Havoc was pretty technical with some of his trips. It was like. They were showing off everything they can do. It feels, it felt like, I don't, I'm going to get your opinion on this. It felt like the first couple episodes, maybe first five, maybe a little bit more, they really just wanted to get over their main stars. So they had a lot of these guys just kind of not jobbing, but just their focus was making the other guy look better. Like Pentagon yeah, was. They were like, they were, they were bit players for sure. 
and now they're finally getting to show off. And this this was a great match. I mean, like I said, all those those uh like the style of wrestling, the the chain wrestling. There was lots of lucha wrestling, but there was even some nasty knees by Angelica. Like <laughs> there was one I I could have sworn hit havoc in the face. Yeah. <laughs> Man, and there was so much to talk about during this match. I mean, it was just pure athleticism from the uh, start to finish. Uh, this is definitely Rich Lattice pro wrestling. Uh, I don't think he listens to the show, but he should. And he should definitely seek this match out because this was amazing. Right up to the finish. Uh, I noticed that Son of Havoc, he goes for the SSP. Uh, and Helico moves, but uh, Havoc has enough wherewithal to land on his feet, which is impressive in and of itself. And then at one point, Angelico, um, nearly, okay, Ivelisse gets on the apron, kisses Son of Havoc, and Helico goes to charge Son of Havoc. Havoc ducks, and Helico nearly hits Ivelisse. Son he of tried Havoc to kiss her. goes in. Yeah, oh yeah, he did. He did. Uh, he tried to kiss her. So Son of Havoc rolls him up. Um... As Angelico is kicking out, the force of his body and the momentum, the son of Havoc into a spear on Ivelisse. And that is when Ivelisse, or pardon me, Angelico rolls up Son of Havoc for the win. So that's another loss for Son of Havoc. He hasn't won since like the second or third episode of the season. And Ivelisse left in a huff. <laughs> well, she doesn't date losers, and he's kind of got a record of a loser. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Sort of like uh, Kenny Omega at Full Gear um, Whoa, 2019, as it were. He wasn't on that show. <laughs> Shut up. I don't I check the record to quote To quote Tommy Lee Jones um, on the Why set of him? Batman Forever. To quote, to quote Tommy Lee Jones on the set of Batman Forever <laughs> in regards to Jim Carrey. I cannot sanction this buffoonery. Well, uh, I have an idea of how we can get Rich to listen. What? We're going to rename it No Rest Holds Podcast. Yeah, that would be that'd be the way to go. There we go. We could call it No Storytelling. Hey, whoa. <laughs> that, what, that wouldn't be true of Lucha Underground, but I'm saying like that's how we could draw Rich in. Uh, now you're just throwing heat. Yeah, of course I am. Well... Brother, be... I've been throwing, I've been throwing one hundred two mile four seamers this entire time. I don't care. I know, but <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't want to be on One Nation Radio and Kiss. Oh man! But we're It'll the East of Podcast, bro. Does it matter? We'll find out. Like, when it comes time for the draft, we're gonna win. When it comes time for trivia, I'm gonna carry us, and we're gonna win again. Like. Great consequences is going to dominate every contest the Social Suplex Podcast Network has for as long as we exist as a show. Well, I mean, you're going to have to because I don't remember things. Well, I do. So, um, and I, I won't, I won't divulge any weak points because people will hone in on them. But I do have some. Um, <laughs> anyway, back to the show. Dario is in his office with Johnny Mundo. Dar- Dario says he wants to move on. And uh, Dario says, you know what? I'm, I'm going to give you a match. I'm going to give you an opportunity here. I'm going to give you a Johnny Mundo versus Cage. And uh, Mundo says, Mundo called Cage a ham bone. He said, you mean that ham bone that broke your belt? I'll it's tell you old... what, I wanna, want you to make another. It's a very old reference. It's like he was born in the 50s. Yeah, I was going to say, that's like, uh, that is dated. Yeah, I think my grandma that's would say worse that's than... dated. That's worse than making a podcast that's not going to drop for two weeks, you know? <clears throat> yeah, I'd hate to do that. Yeah, who would ever do that? <laughs> so, our next match is going to see Famous B facing Pentagon. Before the match can start, we get a vignette. And it's basically just talking about martial arts and Lucha Libre and blah, blah, blah. We've seen it before. Pentagon is going to please his maestro, etc. And uh, there we go. <laughs> not much to report about the vignette. I the only thing I would reiterate is my previous claims that I think an edited wrestling show is better than a live wrestling show because you can do stuff like this. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And not have uh and not have live crowds waiting. 
Yeah, because uh, if speaking of full gear, Floyd was there, and he was bored to tears during the Matt Hardy match because I they were. Don't blame they went, him. Yeah, I would hate to go to a pay per view and watch. Like it, I like that match; it went on too long. But yeah. like you shouldn't. That's not really something you do on a pay per view. I think. No, no. I watched that at home, and I was like, "Man, that's oh, I'm so tired of this." It went on too long. I liked it, but it did go on way imagine, too long. Imagine taking a multiple-hour flight, a flight that probably lasted more than six hours, for all I know, uh, to go to the show, and then you spend 20 minutes watching Matt Hardy and Sammy Guevara play house or whatever. And the thing is, when you're at a live show, like, do you have a good angle of the screen? Like, Sometimes you don't. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You might have a great view of the ring, That's but you enough. might not be able to see the monitor. That That is enough AEW slander for one week, sir. Well, that's valid criticism, but yeah, we can continue. <laughs> no, I know. I know. Um, so this match, not a lot to report. Uh, sick chops, as usual. Um, this was a squash from start to finish squash match. Octagon uh, wins off a... Whoa. Okay. Um, yeah. Pentagon wins off the Penta- Pentagon driver, locks in the Kimura, gets the verbal submission. The bell rings, and uh, he's not letting go of the hold because he immediately snaps the arm of Famous Beast. First time we've seen this in the ring, and by God, was it epic. Especially epic when you add in the, the, the sound effect, too. Now you're going to tell me they added the sa- sound effect, and that's not really the sound of him breaking his arm. And I refuse yeah, to listen to that. Believe it or not, believe it or not, they were not here like actually breaking arms on the show. Mm, I don't know. I've seen them kill people, uh, but yeah, it, this is this the first time, and is it the only time he uses it as a submission? Because I was actually kind of shocked because I didn't remember him ever using it for like without breaking <laughs> someone's arm. Yeah. I uh, I think I think so, but I could be wrong. <laughs> but I think yes, this is the first and only time he. Well, this is definitely the first. I think it is the only time he uses it to get a submission win. When he breaks people, well, you know what? I won't. We're, we'll get to it later. So I, I won't ask <laughs> questions about future matches. But I, I do have some questions about. You can ask me off air. Um, it'll be funnier on air, I think, probably. Okay. Okay. After that, we see Dario talking to someone about Black Lotus was her name. We finally get a name for the unknown angry Asian lady. Black Lotus. Quite the name. Quite the name. Yeah. I, I must have missed uh, that segment. I, I completely forgot about that. No, Dario was like on the phone. Mm. And he said like, oh, she's a little girl back then. But uh, you should see her now. And he's talking to he's talking to this thing or whatever's behind this cage. And he says, like, uh, they're on to you, Matanza. So whatever's behind this cage is Matanza. So we have that to look forward to. And uh, I just hope I'm not disappointed. That's for sure. I don't think you will be. Which I was uh, upon first watch. Maybe on rewatch I won't be. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about it when it happens. I I wasn't, but probably I I liked it, but probably not for the most perfect reasons. And I can't divulge that until we actually get to it. Well, I mean, I like the guy behind the gimmick, but I didn't really like the guy in the gimmick. That's all. No, that's and that's perfectly valid. I I liked the gimmick for because it it reminded me of a, a video game that came out mm. in the Nintendo um, that was too scary to play. <laughs> <laughs> so the next match was uh drago versus aerostar uh you're not much of a football fan are you not really okay so what this match reminded me of because again it was offense 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 mm-hmm. little defense whatsoever it was almost like a fight from a, from the rocky series but it also reminded me of the chiefs versus rams from monday night football in 2018 where it was just the final was like 62 to 59 it was insane. Um, Drago gets the win and uh, helps Aerostar up afterward. What do you think of this match, man? Would I be too off base if I said that Aerostar reminds me of Rey Mysterio if he wasn't dealing with so much wear and tear? 
Uh, no, no, you're absolutely right. Aerostar, he's a freaking athlete. I love the splashes. He does the splashes the same way Ray does, where he just turns into flat as a board <laughs> and he mm-hmm. smashes right into him. Like most people yeah. land on their hands and their knees, but Aerostar and Ray Mysterio like use their body <laughs> and land into you like a real splash. Uh, and at one point, Drago did a psycho crusher. They called it a uh, corkscrew con Hilo, but yeah. if you played Street Fighter, you know what a fucking psycho crusher is. And <laughs> if whether you call him M Bison Vega or just a dictator, if you're a, a video, if you're a competitor in Street Fighter, uh, but that was a fucking psycho crusher and. They always dive over the turnbuckle. <laughs> yeah. You notice that? Like, they don't just dive over the ropes. They dive over the turnbuckle, which is probably three times more dangerous. Yeah, that's insane. You could run face first, chest first. Your feet could hit the turnbuckle. There are so many things that could go wrong. But they always clear the thing. Thank God. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, Drago wins. And what will be... uh folks look forward to this series i'll put it that way um so after that we see phoenix in the back he's sitting in a heavy bag and then all of a sudden he's haunted by katrina it's not the worst ghost to encounter no absolutely not uh katrina kisses phoenix and says keep it on the dl otherwise mil muertes would kill us both and i believe it yeah and that's probably a situation uh you want to avoid Mm-hmm. Because, uh, I mean, Katrina looks great, but yeah. you will die. Yeah. Her character is almost like a succubus, you know? I think, uh, well, I can't spoil it, but they do go into what she is. But yeah, yeah. she's very much a seductress and, and some kind yeah. of banshee or, you know, spirit that lures men to their doom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, by the way... um, for those wondering, Drago, just to talk about the like zany characters on the show, because it's full of zany characters. I mean, you've got a guy who says he's a machine. You've got El, El Mariachi Loco. You've got Pentagon, a martial arts obsessed luchador. You've got Drago, who is a literal dragon. Yes. Like, there are no pretense. There's no pretense. He is a dragon. He's not a guy who thinks he's a dragon. He is a dragon. Yeah, most people on this show, they're not just representing things like Phoenix. Uh, you know, he is Phoenix. Uh, Katrina is, you know, well, I might be spoiling too much. Uh, so I'll stop there. But we haven't even gotten into Aerostar. Yeah. Who is super being as well. <laughs> Aerostar. Yeah, Aerostar, you will. Uh, he does something in season four that's just like, oh, my God. It's like, why don't you ever do this really? ever? You could, you could do that, huh? Yeah, it's one of those powers where it's like, well, you should never lose them. But Yeah, exactly. It's like in Superman. It's like, you mean you could you could travel back in time. You could run so fa- fly so fast in reverse. You could travel back in time. And you only went to do it until your girlfriend's dead. Pretty selfish. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, that's weird. Uh, Mundo versus Cage. This was the main event, man. I didn't take a lot of notes because I knew I knew the outcome of the match going in, and uh, I liked the uh, Cuerno interference. Didn't you? I didn't see it coming, and I was hoping it wouldn't ruin the match. Yeah. Uh, but the way he interferes is so vicious that yes. um, I didn't mind. I didn't know, I didn't remember where this is going. Um, yeah, but I'll I'll tell you what I like this match more than the Puma match versus mm-hmm. Cage. Yeah, because uh, Mundo has very unorthodox kind of uh, flippy shit, unorthodox strikes. Yeah, uh, everything I couldn't predict, even though I know his moves. They they were able to do different stuff, and it made Cage look great. It made I mean at one point when Cage goes nuts at the end, uh, that made Cage look really good. Like he destroys mundo at the end when he gets yeah there. yeah uh and that's the thing is like mundo was doing a lot of evasive stuff um he is a master of parkour so that's you know that's why his offense looks so unique it's because it's very situational for sure mm-hmm. um 
Querno interferes. This calls for a DQ. So, oh, Cage, you got the win over the guy who just the champion, just demolished the champion. This could be good. Uh, Querno like took out the knee, took out the leg. Like by the end of by the end of Querno's interference, Mundo had a bad wing, and then all of a sudden, the guy who wanted to turn over a new leaf about forty minutes ago decides we need to restart this match. Yeah, was was he doing it to hurt Johnny, or was he doing it because yeah. he didn't? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> he was being a dick to Johnny. Did you think Dario Cueto was going to suffer that punch to the face at the end of um, the ladder match um, and just, you know, let bygones be bygones? No, he's got to keep punishing Johnny until something, something happens. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Johnny Mundo's got to kiss the ring or something's got to happen in a, uh, in order for Johnny's luck to turn around. That's for sure. Um, but you know what I like about again, it is that the injury mattered. It wasn't one of those things where they sell it until they hawk up and they you know, yeah. get, get back in it. The, I like it when the injury is consistent and yeah. it matters. It doesn't just go away. Um, like if you, you can tell a story where a body part's being targeted and I will enjoy it. Uh, yeah. But it can't be something that you just at the end you 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 win because you refuse to tap out. I hate that bullshit. Like I I didn't. Yep. Uh, the Minoru Suzuki versus Naito match a few maybe a few years ago. I hated it because like twenty minutes of it was Naito just stuck in a leg lock, not tapping because he because of heart. And you know yeah. you you tap because of pain or because it's gonna snap. And you're telling me Suzuki can't snap someone's limbs? No. But I like it played a part in here, and and it, it, it and it paid off for Cage. And I, I loved it. Now let yeah. me ask you this: Are you familiar with Spider Man? His villain. Yes. Does Corno yes. remind you of Craven the Hunter? Well, I'm not familiar with Craven, so I can't say. Craven was he? He liked hunting like monsters and super beings, and he starts hunting Spider Man. Oh, and but he. He underestimates Spider Man and he overestimates himself. And so, like, when he's going to lose, he starts being a little cowardly, like a villain. Yeah. That's kind of like Quarno. He's going after the big hunt, but, like, if he gets caught in a hunt where he can't win, you know, that's when you tie their legs to ropes or. Yep. Yeah. I I get that, though. I get that for sure. But uh, Cage one off Weapon X on the seal. I will always mark out for finishers on the seal. Dude, Weapon X is awesome. And yeah, it is. It is. And we will see where it goes from here. I think Cage is back in the title hunt, but I guess we'll find out. Uh, that is not all. Dario was in his or Dario was on the phone. He got a knock on the door. He said, go home. The show's over. All of a sudden, we hear a very familiar voice. He says, oh, no, the show's just beginning. Cut to Alberto El Patron is in the temple. Now, was this before or after he beat up the Ninja Turtle? This was before. This was well before. Okay, I'm just making sure. I'm trying to get my timeline this right. This is when Alberto, still a good guy, had recently been fired from WWE because he slapped a guy who made a racist joke at him. Mm-hmm. And uh, now Alberto is here, and by God, he says, my name is Alberto El Patron, but you already knew that. I marked out so hard, dude, because I was like, because he, he he's not that big he doesn't make a big impact on the series relative to like what everyone else does and relative to what happens on the series that I had actually forgot Alberto was in the first season. So like I marked out pretty hard. Well, I mean, he, he I don't really like what he ends up doing uh, yeah. in kayfabe and out of kayfabe. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's a pretty big star. He was a, he was a big land for them. Yeah, the absolutely. Time. That was he was a, a bigger deal. land than Mundo dude. Yeah, yeah, that would be fair because I don't. Mundo wasn't a world champion. Like, there is one guy who they land in season two who is a bigger deal than him. That's it. Bigger deal than. I'll text you. Okay, yeah, because I can't remember. But yeah, it was a huge <laughs> deal. But one You're gonna kick I, yourself when I tell you. Well, I I won't because I I damn near got dementia. But you, did you notice in the ring before we got to the segment that Cage had the ripped up belt still? Oh, yeah, yeah, he wore it around his neck. That was awesome. (laughs) 
He was still carrying that shit around. That's awesome. I forgot That's about that trophy, detail. That's a trophy, dude. I don't blame him. He's, if I can't have it, I'll ruin it, and I'll take it anyway. And what what's going to be even better, folks, is like when they reveal the new Lucha Underground Championship, it's freaking lovely. That was you know I was wondering that because the belt didn't look impressive, and I remember it being pretty yeah. cool. Well, what's funny is the mid card belt, the uh, the step below belt, actually looks better than this one, or than than the uh, new world title, as it were. Dude, I will I completely agree, and we can't talk about why, but it has some neat gimmick in it. But it also mm-hmm. looks badass. But I completely it does. Agree. It does. One of my favorite. I belts. honestly like that's one. If I if I was into buying bootleg uh, belts from from guys that uh, I probably shouldn't, that's probably one I would buy. I I want to buy a bootleg belt, but I just mm-hmm. don't trust the quality because I've bought yeah. enough stuff that like it'll look great. But yeah. If it gets here and it looks like you know garbage, I'm gonna be pissed. You know? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, man, that's that's pretty much the show. How do you uh, how do you rate this episode, dude? I'm gonna give it an eight because uh, yeah. the wrestling told the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, the wrestling was very technical. Like there was a trip that um, Havoc did against Angelico, where he just used his one leg to hook behind Angelico's leg and trip him. Uh, yeah. The 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 damn near the psycho crusher that Drago does. I mean. Pentagon's back doing these breaking arms and making people tap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the main event was a great match. Yeah. I have to give it an eight. Yeah. Uh, see, what's funny is like everything about this show was great. Um, right down to the last guy to show up. Main event could have been better, but it told a good story. And it built to another few that we're going to see. We're going to see play down the line. That being said, the, the arrival of Alberto... And the Drago match, the Son of Havoc match, the there's another match that I'm missing. That happened on this show. Oh, it was the Pentagon, the the squash. Yeah, uh, that told a good story as well. That told us like, hey, you know, Pentagon, like he knows who his master is, or pardon me, he has a master, and he's like, he's you know ready to help him, etc. Um, and he's breaking arms. He's just badass now. Everything mm-hmm. considered, I'm gonna give it an eight and a half. Oh damn! I thought you were gonna yeah. go lower than me, but yeah, I was I can... very impressed this week. This is when the show starts getting like we were talking about how it changes. We are, we are like right at the halfway point of the first season. Exactly. Yeah. This is when the show goes from being like, okay, it's a pretty good show to like, this is awesome. Like Lucha Underground and NXT for a while were my favorite shows. Mm-hmm. Easily. Yeah, and they came on at the same time. It was difficult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, oh, my God. Folks, I believe that is the show. And with that said, again, if you want to hear more of me, listen to me on Eddie and Caleb Zerocast. That drops every Wednesday night after NXT or Dynamite or whatever you might watch from 8 to 10 Eastern on Wednesday nights. Um, anyway, all things considered, we thank you for listening. And always remember, despite what anyone else may tell you, we are and will forever be the true ace of podcasts. Goodbye. Folks, we are not alone here on the Social Suplex Podcast Network. There are plenty of other great shows on here. None as great as ours, of course. But we have on this lineup a bivy of great shows, including 8-Bit Suplex, Suplex, hosted by Sandy Gaviria and Josh McLaughlin, even though he hates me for some reason. We also have All Things Elite, hosted by Austin S. and my boy, my fellow Oki, Floyd Johnson Jr. Again, that's All Things Elite. That covers AEW, and it does it in a damn good way. We got Get in the Ring, DJ Cooks, great host. Also, he hosts a show called The Great Match Generator. And I believe uh, once or twice you've been on that show, if I'm not mistaken. Right, Greg? I was on the first one. We've also got Grown Men Watch This Shit. Again, that's James Vanderbeek and Chris Bryant. Two great guys, in my opinion. Another show, uh, New Japan Centric, Keeping It Strong Style, hosted by Jeremy Donovan and the young boy Josh Smith. A couple of great guys, in my opinion. Lo- loads of great people on this network, if you if you notice the theme. Also, of course, we got the OGs of Social Suplex. We got One Nation Radio, hosted by Rich Latta and James Boyd. 
every Sunday on the network. We've also got the Ricky and Clive Wrestling Show. Last but not least, I love those guys. They're my homies from Scotland. Ricky, you are one handsome devil, and you guys put on a great podcast. And always remember to listen to the Grave Consequences podcast, or there will be Grave Consequences.